Wow. Hello, hello, and welcome to At Home with Lucas. So today we're gonna to be talking about the SF Bay Fog Chaser. Yes, people, this is designed to knock that cloudy mind out of your head and bring you that clarity so you can get it done. At least that's my take on it. <laughs> so in this video, we're gonna be doing a hands-on with the bag. Then we're gonna throw those beans to the burr grinder. We're gonna break them down. That's gonna tell us a little bit more about the quality of the bean. After that, we're gonna put it into the pour over maker. I absolutely love the pour over. I think it's the cleanest, best way to make coffee as of right now, December, 2020. I may change my mind. AeroPress is looking really, really good. I'm actually enjoying it. Um, if you don't know what that is, Google it or watch one of my videos where I talk about the AeroPress. It is really, really cool. All right, after that, we're gonna be doing the sip test. Now, this is the favorite part of my day. I absolutely love tasting new coffee. I wake up for the coffee. This is what I do and I enjoy it immensely. After that, we're gonna find out, is this a daily, weekly, monthly, or never consumption coffee? The last time I had SF Bay, months and months and months ago, when I did a review, I actually enjoyed it, but my palate has changed, I've evolved, I'm a growing human, we are never the same as we were yesterday, today is a new day and we're moving on. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, let's take a look at this behemoth right here, people. Wow, this is very hard to film. <laughs> it just is, it's pure glare. All right, so you have the SF established in 1979, people. 10 years from the 69. All right, you got the, the San Francisco Bay Coffee. That's what it's called. Fog Chaser, what, what? Creamy milk chocolate mandarin orange toffee smooth finish holy but jesus people that is a mouthful and i am so so excited to put this to the test i cannot wait to taste this coffee all right so here is this is why right here this is why i love this company they put the region the elevation and the variety people that is unbelievable that is so cool and it's very much for that consumer that loves to talk and drink new coffee like myself all right so this is central and south america elevation is wow that is very cool variety there you go two pound bag of course i'm going big people i'm going big all right so this is almost their darkest roast it's not quite there we'll get there someday i don't know what that is is that kosher that might be kosher cool Take a look at the side over here, 100% family owned. I love that. I hope one day I can have a family business myself. I think that is very cool. As long as you do it right. Rogers family, all right. Oh yeah, this is the family. There we go. All right, so you got the SF. Looks like the pull tab on the back. Oh, there's the best by date, very small. All right, we're good to go, people. We're good to go. This is a, let's take a look over here. All right. Oh, nice. Oh, that's not good. Oh, cool. Similar on that. All right. Oh, there's the one-way valve right there. If you notice, there's almost no air inside of this bag. Some people will say there's other things going on, um, but I am gonna say there's no air in the bag, which means one-way valve is working perfectly and the glue or whatever is going on up here is also working perfectly. So let's crack this bad boy open. Take a look at these beans. So excited. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that is 100% uh, a vacuum sealed uh, bag 
that you have to cut open. All right, people. Don't worry, I'm a trained scissorman. Turn on the flashlight and take a closer look. This bag is massive. Wow. The aroma that's coming out is pretty good. It's pretty, pretty good. Stay over there, bag. Don't you fall. All right. Ooh, not too bad looking. We got a few imperfections, and one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that we are definitely dealing with a blend, like they said. So you're seeing the smaller beans, the larger beans, and some shattered beans. Um, you have a decent amount of oil, which is good. Uh, the aroma that's coming off is not too strong. It, 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 it's a pleasant smell. It's not overpowering. Um, you got a couple imper imp imperfections throughout, but nonetheless, this looks like some yummy coffee and uh i'm hoping the flavor notes are real people so coming up we're going to throw this into the burr grinder and grind up these bad boys all right let's get into this people we got our burr grinder right here quiz and art quiz and art so we're gonna set this to medium grind because we will be doing a pour over. So let's load up my 12 ounce hopper. This thing has actually become a very nice burr grinder. Um, at first I bought it because I just needed a burr, uh, grinder. I needed anything and I found this on Amazon. Pretty good deal. Um, I think you can pick these things up for about $54 right now, maybe less. So for the price and for the, qu the quality of it, it's. A plus but look at those beans people those are looking glorious they have just the right amount of oil there's hardly any imperfections in there I mean there's some scattered around but it's not terrible and they're the larger size beans so they're a little bit competitive with Starbucks and the Don Pablo and whatnot of the world so here we go. We're going to start to break these bad boys down. And what we're going to look for coming up is a uniform grind. That's going to tell us a lot about these beans. Um, lesser quality beans will kind of break down a little bit more jagged and look a little bit terrible. But coming up right here, we're going to take a closer look at these grounds. So if you look, there's a little bit of jaggedness in there, but it's not terrible. Um, the color is very nice looking. Um, if you saw these in a bag that came from the store, you'd say, yeah, those are those are nice looking grounds, not too bad. Um, but the uniformity is just off enough that you start to question the the beans just a little bit. So you're getting you're getting a little bit more to the story than than when we started by looking at the beans themselves. Um, there we go. Get a closer look. All right, so coming up, we are going to be using my Coffee Gator Pour Over Maker. This is one of my top ways to make coffee. I'm actually starting to really enjoy the AeroPress, but this is still number one, and AeroPress is number two. The main thing with the AeroPress is you can't make a lot of coffee at once, so you're limited to that chamber. This, you can make... 10 ounces, 12 ounces, 16 ounces, and up. So this is a great way to make coffee. I'm actually thinking about making an insane cup of coffee with um, over, get this, over 600 milligrams of caffeine. So that may come soon onto this channel where I pack this thing to the max because I think it can hold like 10 ounces of coffee grounds <laughs> all right so here we go we got our coffee gator kettle this is the pour over kettle i absolutely love this thing so what i do is i i heat the kettle to 200 degrees and then i let it cool down to about 185 that is optimal for pour over all right here we go we're going to do the first blast so when you're doing a pour over you want to soak all those grounds make sure they're nice and soaked and that way um 
they can get evenly wetened. I don't know if that's the right way to say it. Um, and then when you hit it with the second and third, you're going to get a really good understanding of the quality of these beans. And what we're going to look for is, is what I call crema and plumage, um, where it, there you go. So this has a very rich looking, uh, crema. It's, it's almost non-existent really. It's kind of reminiscent of the Italian roast I just did. Um, but this is definitely doing it because it, the, the beans themselves were just not that fresh. So this is a sign that you're dealing with beans that were, you know, I don't know if it was the packaging or if they been in there too long or if they got exposed to sunlight. I don't know what happened, but definitely you're seeing little to no plumage and no crema. Here's a little bit more crema popping out of the top. I call it crema. Other people say it's different, but that's just the way that I can say it and people know what crema is from espresso shots. So it's an easy way to explain what's going on here. Obviously, there's science involved here, but I'm not a scientist, people. All right. Look at that. It looks like a fudge brownie in there, man. So there's a little tiny bit of crema coming out, but it's not enough to really make you believe that this is going to be a yummy cup of coffee. All right, so we are going to let that drip all the way down and coming up, we're going to be doing the pour test. So what we're looking for is a very rich, very glorious stream. And that is looking decent, people. That's not looking bad. And if you look closely, you can see there's zero settlement because that coffee gator filter is phenomenal and it pulls out all of the gunk that you don't want. There we go. So that did not look terrible. That did not look bad. Um, but the ultimate test will be the sip test. That is the key to all of this. All right, let's throw the thermometer in there. So you want your coffee to be about 135. That's optimal for taste and enjoyment. So try this at home. Get a, get a thermometer, throw it in there. Wait till it cools down to 135, then sip it and really enjoy your cup of coffee. There we go. That's perfect. All right, let's get into the sip test. So the smell that I'm getting from this is very, very strong, very acidic and kind of uh, pungent. Now, I don't know if that's because I overloaded the grounds versus coffee. Um, sorry, grounds versus water. But, um, and also I am a little bit foggy in the mind right now. That's probably why I'm messing up my, my verbiage, my words. Um, so this is a perfect coffee for the mood that I'm in, which is cloudy, foggy. So let's see if this coffee actually chases said brain. <laughs> see, I can't even, I can't even get out a witty response response what am i talking about all right let's get into the sip test people wow <laughs> okay all right we're in it people we are in it so the first hit you get is bitter the second hit you get is smoky um and then there's a little bit of sweetness that kind of flows around your molars a little bit. But it's very, it's very, very bitter and harsh. Um, and the aftertaste is a little bit, um, it kind of sticks with you and it's a little bit annoying. It's not a great aftertaste. Um, Yeah, the aroma that you get um, also is, uh, it's just, it's the smell of coffee that's just not hitting it on all points. It's just not there. Um, 
Now, is the caffeine level high on this? I would say it's probably above medium, but below high. I would say it's not quite a, a powerful caffeine boost. Um, I would say that um, the, the taste alone is going to turn off a lot of people. Um, it almost has like a French roast taste without um, the enjoyment, if that makes any sense. So if you know what a French roast tastes like, um, this is kind of like its, its younger brother that just never really amounted to much. That sounds really terrible. <laughs> That's not what I meant, um, but it's something close to that. I feel like this coffee wants to be something it's trying, but it's just not, it's not there. Um, I, I'm definitely not going to go back to this coffee in the future. Um, I'm going to say it's probably a three star for taste. Uh, the beans are decent. I'll give it three and a fourth for the beans. Um, the packaging also was decent. I like how they show where everything came from, but overall, I'm going to say this is a three star uh, rating for me. Um, the color is decent, um, but the overall taste for me personally is just not there. It's just it hits in the wrong places, and it makes me um, makes me a little sad. <laughs> I would say pass on this one, uh, buy something else, buy a, buy another coffee. Um, I know this is on the cheaper end, so it's very appealing right now. You're probably looking at it going, I could buy that and that'll last me a month. Um, but I would really say maybe try a different SF Bay coffee. Maybe don't go with the fog chaser. It's just not there. Uh, go with a different one. I don't remember which one I reviewed a few months back, but that one, I think I liked it. I couldn't tell you. I did review an SF Bay on this channel earlier when I first started out. Uh, so maybe go back and check that one out. Maybe buy that one if I said it was good. But yeah, three stars. I wish it was better. It has all of the, the look and everything to be better, but the taste is just is sour. Um, it's acidic. It's just, it's harsh and it's harsh in a way that it doesn't need to be. Um, so maybe SF Bay retool this one a little bit. Um, <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's it. Boom. There you go. That's SF Bay. Bog Chaser, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely click to clack that like button. And if you wanna join the At Home with Lucas family, hit that subscribe button. Every time I get a subscriber, I get a boost to make more and more videos, and it's because of you guys, I surpassed 1K. On my way to 1 million, I know that sounds like a stretch, but I am here for the long haul. You can trust, you're gonna see this face all over YouTube for decades to come. Yes, people, decades. I am committed. I am all in. This is what I do. Thank you for making it this far. But as always, I thank you for watching each and every one of my videos, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.